Hi everyone, I'm Michelle Kelly. Welcome to Be In The Change. I'm gonna get started by reciting my inspiration. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, which most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your plain small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Marianne Williamson. I'd like to say welcome to everybody who's watching me for the first time and thank you. And welcome back to everybody who has seen me before I started this in 2019, stating I was breaking up with fear, I was breaking up with shame, and I was breaking up with guilt for my New Year's resolution and followed by a weekly video, which I've managed to do and keep doing. So I'm on year three, which is a miracle and a gift. And then last year it was to be kinder and more compassionate to myself, which I have been. And this year it was to break up with sugar. And I started that officially on January 4th started on a Monday and um, I've been telling you guys about my breakup with sugar journey and how last week I was thinking of having ice cream and I went and I got this rebel ice cream and I have to tell you guys it was terrible I think my arm would have tasted better it was so bad I had to like chisel it and uh it totally killed the craving though, by the way. So I tried that and it, I was like, I can't believe I was excited for this and it was horrible. So I threw it out and then um, it got great reviews. So I thought it was gonna be worth trying, but it totally killed it. And then I'm like, nope, I'm doing, the, I'm sticking with my no sugar thing. And then on Saturday, I'm like, God, I just want chocolate. So I had this sugar-free chocolate pudding and I made it with like almond milk and it was like soup. And I tasted it and it tasted good at the time and I had a little bit of it and I'm like, I'm okay. And then um, Sunday when I got out of bed, like my ankles were hurting. I'm like, nope, this is a sign. I am not meant to have sugar, even sugar-free. Like it, it did something in my body that reminded me like my body feels really, really bad when, when I do this. And, you know, I was talking last week about my, my inner tube, like how kids wear a bathing suit with an inner tube on it. And, um, that I, I have that inner tube with no, with no inner tube on and it's going down. I'm starting to notice that I have a waste. I have never had a waste in my life. So this process is still happening. I'm still broken up with sugar. I had, you know, three little times that I've tried it and every time I'm like, this still sucks. So um, I know for me, it is worth it for me to keep doing what I'm doing and thinking I could go back on Weight Watchers and I would feel good. When I got out of bed last Sunday morning, I'm like, this is why I needed to stop having sugar, sugar-free. I drink my coffee with no sweeteners in it anymore. So, so I'm gonna stick to it for as long as I can, but it, you know, I was having cravings and thinking like I was missing out on something and then my body's like, nope, you're not missing anything. And then last week in my video, I was doing another thing and I feel like I have to continue on. This is like a mini series. Like my first week was like how to confront somebody, always start off with a positive. Last week was say what you mean, mean what you say and don't say it mean, which is really, hard um, and I'm getting so much better at that and then this week I wanted to add it with hurt people hurt 
people. And I never heard that expression until probably like six or seven years ago. When people are really hurt, that's usually when they have their screw you in there. And I'm going to give you guys some examples because I had a few things happen. I've had a lawsuit for my car accident that I was in in November of 2019. And my first attorney fired me. We could not agree. Um, now that I live in the world of gray and not black and white anymore, I'm having a harder time dealing with people that still live there. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, attorneys operate out of the worst case scenario and they get paid a lot of money for that. And, and I get it. But um, it's a lot of fear and it's a lot of anxiety and and I'm not living like that anymore. So um, it did not work out with my first attorney. Personality conflict. Um, he didn't like me and the feeling was mutual by the end. And then I got a second set of attorneys and they were, I, like I like them. I like them as people. I would totally be friends with them, and um, but they weren't able to do what I needed them to do. And, um, and my case has supposedly gotten pretty far. I don't think it has. And I was getting this gut feeling that something wasn't right. And it's so, it was so hard for me to listen to that gut feeling, to be like, I don't have physical evidence and I have I don't have physical proof, but this is not right for me. And I have not worked since this accident. I have gotten zero income except for the stimulus. So when I tell you I live on faith, God, and the stimulus, whatever they send, um, that is how I have survived. And a few people gave me money, which I was so grateful for but I am out of every resource possible. So getting rid of my attorney's office was, you know, most people are like, Michelle, I wouldn't do that if I were you. And, um, and I had to do it because it wasn't right for me. And no matter how much money was involved, it wasn't right for me. And I could not live in fear of how am I going to survive? Like I am now living in faith of, I know I'm going to be okay. I don't know how this is going to go down, but I'm going to trust it anyway. And when I wrote back, you know, and I wrote a really nice letter um, with no, I said what I meant. I meant what I said and I wasn't mean. And, um, and I said, no, thank you, as kindly as I could. And, um, and I felt this enormous sense of relief, like I felt peace. And last week when I was getting the feeling that something wasn't right, I had jaw pain so bad for two days, nonstop, like I've never had in my life. And, um, you know, I had a friend let me know that she had a dentist for me and I could go get a bite plate made. And I made the decision to not proceed with, with my attorneys and the jaw pain went away. So like you guys, I am starting to listen to my intuition and trust it. And, um, and to some people I look crazy and I finally am okay with looking crazy because I can't do things that aren't right for me anymore. And I have to trust my intuition, my gut feeling. But as soon as I said, this isn't right for me and I can't do this anymore, I felt peace. I felt joy. I felt free. And I felt like I'm going to be okay. So this week, I'm taking the whole week off of not looking for who's my next attorney, how I'm going to make this happen, what's going to happen from now. But I'm taking the week off and I'm going to, I'm going to pray and I'm going to, you know, decide my next course of action next week after I take a pause. 
So thank you to everybody who's tuning in, who's watching me on this journey. Because I broke up with fear, shame, and guilt, um, it is getting better and I'm allowing it to, to guide me in my life. So um, I want to stay, stay. I want to say, please stay safe, continue watching, and thanks for following me on this journey. And stay tuned, and I'll see you all next week.